Welcome back to Christian Connections uh, here at the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Um, we're going to have hear from Esther a little bit later, but first of all, I'm going to introduce you to uh, two guys that you really want to know. They're with the Loma Linda University, and uh, the first person is no stranger to LLBN. You see him occasionally. Oh, excuse me, that must be Ganim. Hi, Ganim. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I can't talk right now because I'm on the air, so. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll call you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> As I was saying, <laughs> Dr. Stephen Dunbar uh, is with the Earth and uh, Bi Biological, Biological Sciences, Sciences uh, at Loma Linda University. That's right. And uh, you uh, are uh, got a fascinating job. We're going to talk about that in just a minute because I want to introduce your uh, friend Alex Sokolov. Uh, Alex, what do you do at the, for the university? Uh, I worked on the um, Russian MPH program from 2005 to 2009. Uh, when the Loma Linda School of Public Health was offering a full-on master's in public health in Russia. And Russia is my country. I am Russian, so I was uh, part of that team. Uh, you know, I was translating and coordinating the project. Uh, I also, during that time, I studied and I graduated with an MBA in healthcare administration from the School of Public Health. And then for one year, or about a year in 2010, I worked at the Global Health Institute. Um, I was coordinating the Haiti Relief. Haiti Relief, I was coordinating the volunteers that the Global Health Institute was placing at the hospital. At the so did hospital. you actually go to uh, Haiti? Or no, I never got to go myself, yeah. but um, I would just work with a lot of volunteers and a lot of wonderful people. You know, during the time that I was there, we placed about 700 volunteers right in the middle of that relief operation. And nice. All from Loma Linda University or from <coughs> other areas? No, they were from, uh, from all around the country. I see. From all around the country. So you were just like the clearinghouse, the central point. Uh, yes, yes, I was very much there. <laughs> yes. yeah. And then you were saying? Yeah, and uh, at the moment my wife is finishing her residency here, mm. and I'm a stay-at-home dad, but, uh, you know, I have this tendency for development, so, uh, and we can probably tell you a little bit more about it as we uh, explored more this initiative that we came here to talk you, to you about. Oh, well, thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> let's uh, find out what uh, Steve is up to these days. Now, uh, you're a guy that just loves, loves to swim with the fishes, or uh, more accurately, we could say... Uh, with the turtles. The turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Not just the turtles, yes. but the big ones. The big sea turtles, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, over there in uh, Honduras. In Honduras. And, and uh, Belize. No, I mainly am focused on Honduras. There's, yeah. there's a lot of work there to be done. So, so wh what do sea turtles and Loma Linda University have to do? Sea turtles are in Honduras and Loma Linda is in Loma Linda. Well, our mission, the mission of the university, is about uh, uh, continuing the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus. And, and part of that teaching and healing ministry was uh, about teaching about and healing the, the earth nature and creation. And so our department, uh, the Department of Earth and Biological Sciences, is really focused on uh, conservation efforts, uh, wildlife research, and uh, being involved with the, the creation, helping people to uh, conserve uh, animals and environments around the planet. Hmm. So uh, what can you tell us about the current state of affairs uh, as far as the health of the pa planet are concerned? I mean, are, are the polar bears really going to be extinct in the next 90 well, well, we don't we don't really know at this point, but we know for sure that that the health of the planet is uh, declining, mm -hmm. and there are signs all around the planet that uh, that that the planet is really sick, mm -hmm. and uh, that includes things like coral reefs, um, terrestrial habitats, uh, even uh, rainforests in Central and South America. Mm -hmm. Uh, you say the planet is really <coughs> sick, and uh, that kind of goes uh, on with uh, the times that we're living in. That's correct. I keep hearing that word, uh, well, you know, there's, there's the signs of this and the signs of that, economic signs, health signs, and now we've got the planet in distress. Absolutely. Uh, where is it going to all lead? Well, you know, uh, we know that, uh, that 
the planet is going to continue to deteriorate until Christ comes. Mm -hmm. But he entrusted the planet to us, and he wants us to care for it as best as we can to be his stewards. And so part of our calling in the department is really to go forward and try to, to alleviate as much of the suffering uh, of animals, of the planet, and of community members as we can. So it's uh, more a matter of stewardship and not go back to the earth and hug trees. And, I well, mean, there, there is a science <coughs> behind your science. Absolutely. And uh, the science is what guides our conservation efforts. And of course, part of the conservation efforts is really involving and involved with the communities that heavily rely on uh, many of these endangered species. So when now give we, us an example of that. Well, for example, um, with the sea turtles, we have communities in Honduras who harvest the sea turtle eggs. And those eggs are sold to markets, and essentially they're used as an aphrodisiac. But a lot of the community members actually make a part of their annual income based on the harvesting and selling of those eggs. So once those eggs are lost, they've lost that portion of their annual income. So we're trying to change the way that they get an income from the environment, the habitat, so that rather than using it up, that it's somewhat sustainable. They can continue to use the same turtle over and over again and uh, draw an income from that turtle in a way that doesn't use the turtle in a consumptive manner. So de develop an alternative pro product, like tourism? Exactly, right? ecotourism mm -hmm. and, and some of the other things that go along with that. Oh, you mentioned an interesting word. What, what's uh, ecotourism about? Is, uh, well, I, I keep seeing green pea ships in the background. Oh, <laughs> <so. laughs> well, this isn't about green pea it, ships. It's not, not connected to that no, or, that's or right. some of the other. Uh, no. This is a, a program unto its own? Uh, it is, although ecotourism is really uh, a global phenomenon. Mm. It's a, I it's see that occasionally on the travel channel. Correct, correct. And it's a growing industry where people want to go to areas uh, where they can see endangered species, they can experience ecosystems and habitats that are not typical to their, to their native ha homes. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a way of increasing uh, income in those local areas. Mm. Now you brought some uh, foot of footage uh, for us to uh, look at mm -hmm. and uh, a whole bunch of stills and uh, we decided to choose the video. Okay, so good. let's take a look at that video and uh, have you tell us uh, what we're going to be seeing here uh, just in a minute and when, because I just surprised the director <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> threw a curveball at them. So let's uh, talk a, uh, a little bit more about how your department uh, is supported. Well, our dis department is uh, supported both through the university as well as through the general conference. Uh, they do allocate some funds towards the department because the Department of Earth and Biological Sciences is a place where we're training graduate students, uh, not only to be researchers, but also to be uh, teachers, both within and outside of the Adventist education system. And uh, so we're supported by both the university and, uh, and the general conference. We also have uh, some donors who specifically donate funds to the department for us to be able to buy equipment that's needed and also to support some of our international students from Africa, uh, South America, and, and various places. So this is really a wide-ranging uh, interest, um, private community, yes. corporate community, right. uh, academic community. And, and in the department, we have both a focus on biology as well as geology. So uh, it's, it's a nice opportunity for graduate students. So to, how do you tie, uh, tie this all into the Bible? <coughs> is it through creationism or? Uh, there is there is a tie-in uh, in that way uh, through the connection of faith and science, mm -hmm. and uh, we are very uh, much scientists, and yet uh, we're also very much uh, Adventists who believe in in the foundations of the Bible, and uh, therefore that guides uh, the way we look at our science, the way we look at uh, how we investigate things, and so I think that's a, an important uh, tie-in. Of, of faith and science. Well, let's look at uh, some pictures of God's science sure. uh, right here on LLBN. Now, uh, uh, just, just uh, give us a tour of what we're going to see. This is uh, one of the communities that I work in in Honduras, the community of El Venado. 
And in this particular video, we're seeing uh, some of the students and faculty members that uh, went down to the community to work with some of the local community members and provide health care and dental care to the community. Here, some of the nutrition students are working with some of the local cooks, some of the ladies that cook in the little uh, turtle center and uh, helping them to understand nutrition. And of course, we're providing free dental care to the community. Here's a little bit of the surroundings around the community uh, of El Bonato. And uh, I've been working in this community for about uh, three years now, going on to our fourth. This was a, actually a SIMS trip, which is uh, Students for International Mission Service. And uh, we're planning another SIMS trip coming up here at the, the last week of August as well. This is part of my uh, conservation projects because, again, we're, we're combining not just the science and the conservation of the sea turtles, but also working with the local communities in helping them to develop alternative income sources. And part of that is for us to bring groups down to the community where they can see turtles and also where they can help to support the, the income of the local communities. So there you saw some of the turtle eggs that they harvest and that they're harvesting and sell. Local markets. And Correct. So that's the turtle center right here. Mm. And, uh, and we work out of that center. Here at this particular time, you'll see uh, various aspects of the medical outreach and mission that uh, the Sims group was doing, doing some uh, medical checks. Health studies. Health and studies and health, uh, health checkups for local people. Looks like it's kind of warm out there. It is. It's a tropical place. Who are these uh, Very guys? beautiful. This is now uh, on the north coast in the Caribbean. Yeah. Uh, there I am swimming. Yeah, very with, hard uh, labor, I some noticed. Of the, some of the sea turtles. That's my office, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's pretty nice to be able to, to work in a, an environment like that. And uh, this is also part of the sea turtle research. Um, we are working on in-water surveys and in-water behavior. Is that part behavior. of Alex's fin there? hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But uh, it's a beautiful place and uh, we, we really are blessed to be able to work in, in this kind of an environment. But this is all part of our, our research work and of course it's combined with the conservation. So uh, this is the Reef House Resort on Roatan that we're working out of and here you see uh, we have uh, one of the turtles that we've been measuring and weighing, taking blood samples for genetics and just releasing it back into this protective pool where the turtles wait for us to have the opportunity to then take them back out and release them into the open ocean. So this is the pool? Uh, is no, this is, this is actually back out in the ocean oh, where okay. we've released them and they uh, very often are not concerned about us at all. We release them and then we'll follow them around and take photographs and, and video of them, uh, study their behavior once they've been released. And, uh, and then be able to uh, gather that kind of well, information. Well, inter interesting, you leave us with the uh, sight of sharks circling yeah, yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't bother us, yeah. so we're, yeah, they we're got okay of, with them. Lots to eat. That's right. That's right. Uh, big, big ocean, and those, those turtles are really fabulous. How long do they live? Um, they, they can live quite a long time. They're usually, uh, we assume that they live anywhere up, upwards of 60, 80 to probably 100 mm -hmm. years or so. Uh, it's very difficult to tell how old a turtle is while it's alive, so we estimate how old it is uh, by calculating a few different things. But uh, we estimate that they, they live a long time if they're given the chance. Mm. So in a nutshell, your, the goal of your research is? The goal of our research is really the conservation of uh, sea turtles. Some of these turtles are critically endangered and their populations are shrinking. And so we're working with the communities to start conservation projects where we can uh, take some of those eggs that are usually going to the market and recycle them, that is, hatch the eggs out, put those hatchlings back into the water and know that they're going to come back in 15 or 16 years from now when they mature. Have you seen any results at all? Not so far because it's too, uh, soon. It's, too, it's soon. too soon. We've just been working there for mm -hmm. about five or six years now, so we're still tagging turtles and collecting samples for DNA. Now, I saw a boatload of people are floating mm -hmm. down the channel, and Alex, uh, there's a program which people can get involved 
and uh, kind of participate for a week or so. Uh, in fact, uh, today happens to be a deadline. If you want to get your paper and pencil handily, uh, mm. you might want to write this information down because it's going to be pretty interesting. Mm. It's called Echo Boot Camp. What is that? Yes. Uh, You're co-founder, by the way. Yes, yes. We uh, together with Dr. Don Barr, myself, and Charles Rollins, you yes. know, the uh, personal trainer, uh, who couldn't quite uh, make it to this filming today. He's busy. Training. Yeah, he's swimming with the turtle. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah>. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's swimming it's with his clients. Yes, yes. No, not exactly <laughs> with the turtle. <laughs> but anyway, we we came up with this idea of an eco boot camp. It's a it's a combination of an already existing eco tourism, yes. which is already a big and established industry and an uh, emerging industry, fitness tourism. What fitness tourism is about is uh, people get together in groups, you know, they have trainers, nutritionists, maybe, maybe yoga instructors, you know, all sorts of other, you know, fitness uh, components instructors, mm -hmm. and they go to some exotic locations and they train, sometimes for a week, sometimes for two weeks, sometimes even for a month at a time. Got to be yeah. in really great shape to do this kind of a program? No, actually the goal of the program is to get right. into that kind of a shape. So you got to, what we're talking about is a week-long program presently. Yeah, at this moment we're talking about uh, weekly, yeah, about a about week couple. Maybe we'll be able to uh, eventually have maybe two, three, four week-long sessions throughout the year hosted by the Alvinado Turtle Center. Mm. And so and the idea is that we, we get a group of people, about 10 to 12, mm -hmm. we travel to... Uh, to a turtle center, to El Venado, Honduras. And there, you know, the, the participants, the camp participants, they not only train, and these are beautiful, beautiful surroundings, yes. they swim in that ocean, mm. they run those hills. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, you, you've seen the turtle center, and you, you know, that beautiful deck is wonderful for stretching and right. for all sorts of other things. But they also participate actively in the, uh, in the eco, conservation. in the conservation projects. Sure. Uh, in, in, we have a tentative schedule and every day we allocate, we give them about three to four hours where they do community outreach. Mm -hmm. Whether they help Dr. Dunbar with his projects, whether they are involved in the construction work and helping out the Turtle Center or, or the community. The community. Yeah. Uh, another thing that they could do is ESL, English as a Second Language, mm -hmm. uh, outreach and teach some conversational English skills to the community members who want to so be. It's really a, a, a mission outreach. Absolutely. Yeah, very much Absolutely. so. And, and, and this is open to anybody right now. To correct? anybody right now. And this is the last day, as a matter of fact. This, this is was the supposed to be the deadline for Santa signing up. And you got about six places left, I understand? Uh, something like that, yeah. yeah. The first camp we wanted to run from May 18 to May 26. Right. Uh, and we need about 10 people to make mm -hmm. it happen, you know, to split the costs and so that it's affordable. Right. And, and uh, it does, you know, there, there is a cost associated. Yes. I'm not going to talk about the cost right, right now. I and mean, they can get it in, in touch with you for, for yeah, more correct. information. In fact, they're going to have to do that pretty quickly, aren't they? Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, another camp that we will be running this year will be in August. And exactly, it will be August 17 to 25. Oh, 25, so if you don't make this one, maybe correct. you want to put that on There's your another calendar. Opportunity. Give you more t time to check it out. But Honduras is a beautiful oh, place. Absolutely I mean, yeah. fabulous. I've been in the, in the region, uh, you know, a few times. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to come home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how you come back. Well, <laughs> I have a wife here, so that oh, <laughs> brings me back okay. every time. <laughs> Yeah. So, Alex, uh, yes. what, what was the last word? Uh, what, what would you want to tell tell our audience uh, before we have to say? Uh, I would uh, invite everybody who is interested in this particular project. This is a brand new. We know we are the ones who came up with this idea of merging the two kinds of tourism, ecotourism and fitness tourism together. And I will invite everybody to email us to ecobootcamp at gmail dot com. Uh, and we can then send a full out booklet, all sorts of information. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we will be doing is on May 12th, at 8 o'clock at the Drayson Center, we will be sponsoring, we will be providing a free sample training for everybody who is interested. They can come to the Drayson Center at Loma Linda University at 8 o'clock. We will probably talk a little bit about this initiative, and then we'll uh, do a little bit of a eco boot camp type training, maybe for an hour, an hour and a half give people, those who are interested, a bit of a sample. This mm -hmm. Sunday? 
uh, May 12th. May 12th. So not coming. this coming Sunday, but in a week. Okay, so you, eight you o'clock. Time to... Eight o'clock at the Drayson Center. Okay, for more information, uh, we've got the website. In fact, if you don't get the the uh, website, just uh, call us here at Christian Connection, and Hannah will put you in touch with uh, these guys. And this is really a, a really great opportunity to do some uh, fabulous mission work. Uh, if you want more information, don't forget to call. Uh, they're waiting to hear from you now. Today's supposed to be the deadline, but they're going to stretch it up just a little bit.